in the previous episode of the series, and check that out if you haven't seen it yet, we're going to have a card right now, we ended by looking at the closed form of the generating function of the Fibonacci numbers, that is, the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of fn x to the n. And that, for some radius of convergence r, which we're not going to look at right now, is equal to x over 1 minus x minus x squared. All right? And essentially here, the Fibonacci numbers, as you may or may not know, we start with f0 equals 0, f1 equals 1, and then this next term is the sum of the two previous. All right? And as a reminder for you guys that haven't seen the previous video, Generating functions encode a sequence g sub n and a variable x as a sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of g n x to the n, all right, like you see over here. But now it's important to remind ourselves that generating functions are functions, all right, and f of x does not just have to be a number input. We can compose functions. We can get f of g of x. And so that's why I want you to think of from now on, if you haven't been doing that already, of x as a thing, okay? It's anything you want it to be. And so it might be helpful to look at the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of some thing raised to the nth power as equal to 1 over 1 minus thing as long as the size of your thing is less than 1. This is our geometric series that we looked at in the first episode of the series. All right? And that's an important perspective to have. So you can plug in, instead of x to the n, you can plug in a to the nx to the n. And let's see what that does. All right? The sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of a nx to the n is the same thing as saying in the sum quantity ax raised to the power n, and that's going to equal 1 over 1 minus ax, as long as the absolute value of ax is less than 1. All right, and if we look at the example with a function like sine of x, we say n going from 0 to infinity sum of sine to the nth power x. That's equal to 1 over 1 minus sine x, as long as the absolute value of sine x is less than 1. All right. And I encourage you to go onto Desmos and check and play around with different functions and composing them with the geometric series or with the Fibonacci generating function, and you'll see the same results. All right, you'll see that it works, and you can update the radius of convergence based on your entry here. All right, again, size of thing is less than one. Here we can also say two plus x to the nth power. All right, is one over one minus quantity two plus x, as long as the radius of convergence of two plus x in absolute value is less than one. So that's just an important perspective to have and um, before we move on. Now, the main point of this video today is that we can integrate geometric series, just as we had differentiated them in the previous episode to get new sequences and their closed forms. We can integrate to find new closed forms and different sequences. All right, And that's where we can see our true connection with Taylor series, which we're going to do right now. So let's start with the hero of our story, the, ge the geometric series 1 over 1 minus x as equal to the sum n going from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And we're going to plug in instead of x minus x. And so what we get is we get 1 over 1 minus minus x, which is 1 plus x, is equal to, right, the sum n going from 0 to infinity of minus x to the nth power, which can be split into minus 1 to the n, x to the n. So we get an alternating geometric series here with this nice form. And now let's integrate both sides, all right? We're going to hit it with the integral with, with respect to x, all right? And what do we get? Well, integrating 1 over 1 plus x, you may or may not know from calculus, is the log of the absolute value of 1 plus x, but we're just going to look at 1 plus x because you can see the entries are going to be positive. All right? And now we're going to say the right-hand side is equal to the sum, all right, n going from 0 to infinity of what? Well, minus 1 to the n is a constant with respect to the integral, so we can keep that over here. And then x to the n by the power rule is just x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And now you might wonder, for calculus enthusiasts, what about the plus c, all right? Technically, you do need a plus c, but when you plug in 0 into both sides, ln of 1 is 0, and plugging in 0 to this polynomial will become 0. So c is 0, and we can negate it. We have an exact equality here, all right? And what's interesting about this is that even though the geometric series itself is con converges only as absolute value of x is less than 1 strictly, this is a conditionally convergent series, all right? And we're not going to get into conditional convergence in this episode, but it's just something to know. All right, here, that just means that at one of the end points of the interval, all right, we can plug that value in. And in this case, we can plug in x equals 1. And so what do we get? We get ln of 1 plus 1 is just 2, all right, is equal to the sum, right, n going from 0 to infinity of what? We get minus 1 to the n over n plus 1, all right? And this has a more popular form if you re-index, all right, by changing the bounds from 0 to infinity to 1 to infinity, of minus 1 to the n plus 1, because we want to start on a positive term, divided by n. 
And this is the alternating harmonic series, all right? What this is written now is one minus one half plus one third minus one fourth plus one fifth minus one sixth, and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, forever, never, never, all right? And that converges very surprisingly to log of two, which is really interesting when you consider the fact that you have these rational numbers that are added together infinitely to form an irrational transcendental answer, all right? So that's very cool. And um, this is also interesting because the actual harmonic series itself, one plus one half plus one third plus one fourth, diverges, all right? It goes to infinity. So that's an interesting thing to consider. And so now you have the generating function for the log of one plus x, or alternatively the sequence minus one to the n over n plus one, all right? Now, let's go back to the geometric series once again. And this time, let's plug in instead of x, minus x squared. And you'll see why I do this, all right? Because then we get 1 over 1 minus minus x squared, which is plus x squared like this, all right, is equal to what? It's equal to the sum, right, n going from 0 to infinity of what? We get x to the n, but now it's minus x squared to the n, which is minus 1 to the n, right, times x squared to the n. And x squared to the n by exponent rules is x to the 2n. So we get this. And once again, let's integrate both sides. And what do we get? Well, again, if you've taken calculus and you've taken the derivative and integral courses, you'll know that the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared is arc tan x, and likewise, the derivative of arc tan x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Check out the video that I carved just now on the trig derivatives, all right, the inverse trig derivatives. And so you get arc tan of x on the left-hand side, all right, and that's equal to what? Well, once again, the minus 1 to the n constant is taken out of the integral, and using the idea that the integral is a linear operator, that is the sum of the integrals, the integral of the sum, we can say the sum of n going from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n times what? We get x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. All right? And again, if you plug in 0 or into both sides, you get 0. So you can have a c constant 0. And so this is your final geometric, or not geometric, sorry, generating function or Taylor series derived from the geometric series. You can think of arctan x as the function which is the generating function encoding the alternating reciprocals of odd numbers, all right? And like the ln 1 plus x series, this is conditionally convergent, which means in this case, we can plug in x equals 1. So let's do that, all right? Arctan of 1 is what? So we plug in arctan of 1, we get the sum, all right, n going from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over 2n plus 1, like this, all right? And what's interesting is that arctan of 1 is pi over 4, which means that a very well-known formula for pi here is equal to 4 times, I'm going to write a better 4 for this, all right, times the sum, all right, n going from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over 2n plus 1. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the time that I'd like to wish you a happy pi day at the time of recording this. And uh, I hope you celebrate by doing math, computing pi, memorizing digits, eating pi, or whatever else you do on pi day. I don't know. So this is a nice formula that we found from the help of the geometric series and generating functions. So that's really nice if you ask me. And remember that we are not just sort of linked only to the geometric series, all right? We've recalled from the previous episode the binomial series, all right, which is a direct result of Newton's binomial theorem. It says the sum n going from 0 to infinity of alpha choose n, all right, some constant alpha times x to the n is equal to 1 plus x to the alpha, all right? That's our power on top. And we can generalize alpha from just being a positive natural number to being in any interesting number. And so let's see how that works, all right? The definition of a combination n choose k is, you might think n factorial over k factorial times n minus k quantity factorial, but in fact, it's actually n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all right, multiplied all the way down to n minus k plus 1, and we divide the whole thing by k factorial, all right? And this is how you can generalize it for fractions, all right? Because then it becomes an infinite product, essentially, um, at the bottom, all right? Or as long as you need to go to k, all right? So let's look at this example of the binomial series being the one that we're using to find interesting things. And we're going to do that by looking at arc sine of x, all right, inverse sine function, all right? Arc sine of x, you may or may not know, is the integral of the function dx over root 1 minus x squared. And so now 
you may want to pause the video and consider how you can manipulate this expression to liken that one of the binomial series. All right. And so let's just show you how it's done. All right. This is equal to the integral of what? So 1 minus x squared is raised to the 1 half power, and then it's inverted. So it's 1 minus x squared to the minus 1 half power, right? dx. And in this situation, we can see that we're basically replacing the x from the binomial series with minus x squared, just like we did for the arctan. And so we get the integral of 1 plus minus x squared to the minus 1 half power dx. All right, and now we're going to expand this into the geometric, or not sorry, geometric, the binomial series form, which says sum, n going from 0 to infinity, of minus 1 half choose n, which again, we can make sense of using this definition of the combination up here, all right, multiplied by what? Well, minus 1 to the n, all right, here, and x squared is going to be x to the 2n, like this, and we're dxing that here. Great, and now, once again, using the linearity of the integral, and the constants being minus 1 half choose n and minus 1 to the n, we can pull those out of the integral, and we get the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 half choose n, right, times minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. All right? And so you can think of arc sine of x as the generating function that encodes the unusual sequence minus 1 to the n times minus 1 half choose n over 2n plus 1. We can do one step better here. All right, let's see what minus one half choose n becomes. All right, minus one half choose n by definition of our combination is minus one half times minus one half minus one, which is minus three halves, like this, times minus five halves times minus seven halves, all the way down to minus one half minus n plus one. All right, and we divide the whole thing by n factorial. And let's just bring minus one half minus n plus one into a nice common denominator. All right, which becomes minus 1 half minus 2n halves plus 2 halves. All right, and we get what? We get 1 minus 2n halves. And because all those terms are negative here, we can pull the negative out of here as well, and we get minus 2n minus 1 over 2, a, nice, a nicer form. All right, so let's write that down here. We can replace this with the result here. We have times minus, all right, I'm going to put that in here, minus 2n minus 1 over 2. All right, and look, with these factorials, we have n terms, right? We go 1, 3, 5, all the way up to 2n minus 1, all right? That's n terms, and what we can do is out of each of these n terms, we have a minus sign, and we have a 2. So we can sort of factor out, um, which is it's really not factoring, but it's really just kind of rearranging the terms, all right? What we get here is that we can take out the 1 halves and the minuses all together, n times. So you have minus 1 half choose n, is equal to, well, minus 1 to the n, all right, over 2 to the n. And then we have 1 times 3 times 5, all the way up to 2n minus 1, all right? Essentially, the product of all the odd terms up to 2n minus 1. And that's known as the double factorial, all right? It's, we can write 2n double factorial, or sorry, 2n minus 1 double factorial. And essentially, the double factorial simply is the product of all terms uh, of 2n minus 1 value or lower that have the same parity or evenness and oddness. All right, so that's important to mention there. And then we divide that, of course, by n factorial. But now here's the interesting part. 2 to the n times n factorial is what? Well, if we take a 2 and multiply it in to 1 times 2 times 3, we get the even version of the 2n double factorial. All right, I'm just going to expand that out for you if you don't understand just yet. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way up to n is our n factorial term, and 2 to the n is just multiplying by 2, so you get 2 times 4 times 6 times 8 all the way up to 2n, all right? So this identity here, 2 to the n times n factorial is 2n double factorial holds, all right? And so that means that minus 1 half choose n, all right, our sort of little journey here is almost at an end, all right, is equal to what? It's equal to minus 1 to the n, times 2n minus 1 double factorial over 2n double factorial. And that's really cool, all right? We have a nicer form for this. And therefore, we can take all the way back to our um, arc sine expression here, which I'm going to reproduce below, all right? Pull that all the way down here. All right, we can now express this instead as this, all right? Let's move all the way this over here, get rid of this, because I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to do it manually. 
and just put this over here. All right, great. But look, what's even more interesting here is that we have a minus one to the n and a minus one to the n, which is minus one times minus one, which is one. And so we can just get rid of them. All right, they cancel out and become positive. And so now you're left with the form 2n minus 1 double factorial over 2n double factorial times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the arc sine expression, all right, can be written like this. All right, I'm going to write it nicer and more consolidated here. Sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2n minus 1 double factorial over 2n double factorial times x to the 2n plus 1 all over 2n plus 1 here. All right? And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the series expression for arc sine of x. But wait, there's more. All right? Because if we look at 2n double factorial and multiply by 2n double factorial on both sides, what do we get? All right? Well, notice how these are all the even terms from 1 to 2n, and these are all the odd terms from 1 to 2n. So we get 2n factorial simply. All right? And on the bottom, we're going to get 2n double factorial squared. All right? And so we can write this instead as the sum all right, and going from zero to infinity of 2n quantity factorial over 2n double factorial squared, which is once again using this idea of 2 to the n times n factorial being 2n double factorial. This just means that this entire thing is squared. All right, so we can write this down as n factorial squared times 2 to the n squared, which is 2 to the 2n. So we have 2 to the 2n, all right, n factorial squared, all right, and then we multiply that all once again by x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, an, an equally viable term if you don't want to use double factorials and you just want to use single factorials, all right? And there you go. That is the final expression that I'm going to leave you with. And once again, this is conditionally convergent, and so if you plug in 1, arc sine of 1 is pi over 2, and back to the pi day, you can say pi over 2, or at least pi is equal to twice, right, this sum over here, all right? and going from 0 to infinity of the expression 2n factorial over 2 to the 2n times n factorial squared times 1 over 2n plus 1. It's a crazy expression, but it works. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed this little foray into integrating key baseline uh, ge geometric series and binomial series generating functions to find new generating functions in Taylor series in general. All right. Now, the next episode in the series is going to cover the real mathematical applications of generating functions, including finding closed forms of certain sequences, finding sums, and infinite series. So stay tuned for that. Till then.